In this lesson, I am going to discuss projection of a vector on a subspace. Let us recall that in our previous lessons, we studied the projection of a vector on another vector. So what is happening there? Here, I am projecting V onto U. This is my U and this is my vector V. If I project V onto U, we can interpret the projection of a vector on another vector as scalar multiple of U, which is closest to V. What we want to do in this section is we want to project a vector to a subspace. We are no longer just interested in the projection of a vector on another vector. What we want to do is to project a vector on a subspace. Suppose that we are on R3 and S is spanned by two vectors. Let's call that V1 and V2. I want to get the projection of V onto this subspace. So again, we are just going to get this imaginary orthogonal line segment and draw this vector over here. Now, what is the projection of a vector on a subspace? So an interpretation of that would be the vector in the subspace S, which is closest to V. So here is a formula for the projection of a vector on a subspace. Take note that you have to start with an orthonormal basis. So to project a vector V on a subspace S, it's equal to the inner product of V with each of the vectors here. Those will be the coefficients and you will multiply that to the UIs. Now take note here that V is not necessarily an element of the subspace S. However, if V is in S, then we can write V as a linear combination of the UIs, correct? And from our previous video lecture, how do you write V as a linear combination of these vectors? It's equal to V inner product with U1, this expression over here. So this is if V is in S, we can write V in this way. However, if V is not in S, this expression is the projection of V onto S. For example, let us find the projection of the vector U onto the subspace of R3 spanned by these two vectors. So remember that before we can use our formula of projection of U on a subspace, let's call S be the span of V and W. Remember that you need to have an orthonormal basis. Does this form an orthonormal basis? Well, first, let us see if they are orthogonal. Since I did not indicate the inner product here, automatically we are referring to the dot product. Let us check first. If we form the dot product, of course, that's equal to 0. So the answer here is yes. Number 2 are the unit vectors. Let us compute the norm of V squared. I will just look at the square so that I no longer have a square root. It's equal to, this is under the dot product. So it's 3 squared plus 1, that's 10. What about the norm of W? The norm of W is equal to 2. Although they are orthogonal, these two vectors are not unit vectors. So... This is not an orthonormal basis. You still cannot use the formula. But it is easy to remedy if they are not unit vectors. All we have to do is to normalize them. Let us form our unit vectors. My V over its norm is equal to 0, 3 over square root of 10, 1 over square root of 10, and my U2, that's W over its length, so that's just equal to 1, 0, 0. Now we can use the formula. The projection of u onto the subspace S is equal to u, u1, u1, plus the inner product of u with u2 times u. Recall that our u is 1, 1, 3. So u times u1 is equal to 6 over square root of 10 times u1.
plus the inner product of u with u2 is just equal to 1. So this is just u2, 1, 0, 0. This is equal to 1, 18 over 10 or 9 fifths, and 6 over 10 or 3 fifths. Let us also recall the projection theorem on Rn. Recall there that if we are given two vectors u and v with v non-zero, we can express u as a sum of v1 and v2 where v1 is a scalar multiple of v and v2 is orthogonal to v. Let us draw that. Suppose this is v and this is u. First, I will project u onto v. So I will form this line. So v1 is this and v2 is this vector here wherein it's orthogonal to the vector v. This is v2. So we also want to extend this to a subspace. So again, we have a subspace w here and I have a vector u. We can also express it in exactly one way as a sum of an element in our subspace and another element in W perp. So for example, we have this inner product in R3. Take note that this is just a weighted inner product. We are no longer working with the dot product. Let W be the subspace spanned by these two vectors, V1 and V2. We want to express V as a sum of a vector in W and a vector in W perp. Alright, so we want to write V as W1 plus W2 where W1 is in W and W2 is in W perp. All we have to do for W1, what is W1? W1 is just the projection of V onto W. To get the projection of V onto W, we have to get an orthonormal basis first. So first, let us check whether v1 and v2 are orthogonal under the defined inner product. v1, v2 is equal to the product of the first components, that's 0. Take note that in our weighted inner product, the second components get multiplied by 4. So this is 1 times negative 1 times 4. And then this one, the product of 2 and 2, which is 4. And yes, it's equal to 0. The answer here is... Yes. The next question is whether v1 and v2 unit vectors. So let us compute their length. So remember, I am getting the square of the lengths. So v1 squared is equal to negative 4 squared. Remember that for the second component, you always have a 4. Right? Plus 2 squared. So that's 16 plus 4, 20. 24. So just from here, the answer is no. But let us still continue. What is v2 squared? That's equal to 0 squared plus 4 times negative 1 squared plus 2 squared. So that's 8. So now our orthonormal basis is v1 over the length of v1 is... 1 over square root of 24 is 2 square root of 6 times negative 4, 1, 2. So that's negative 2 over square root of 6, 1 over 2 square root of 6, and 1 over square root of 6. Next, V2 over the norm of V2 is 0, negative 1 over 2 square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2. These two vectors here will form our orthonormal basis which will enable us to get the projection of V onto W. So we can now get the projection of V onto W. Let's call this u1 and u2. So the projection of v onto w is inner product of v with u1 times u1 plus inner product of v with u2 times u2. 
let's calculate first the inner product of V with U1. It's equal to negative 2 over square root of 6 times 1 plus 4 times 1 over 2 square root of 6 times 1 plus 1 over square root of 6 times 1. This is equal to 1 over square root of 6. Next, the inner product of V with U2. V with U2 is 0 plus 4 times negative 1 over 2 square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 2. And this is equal to negative 1 over square root of 2. Hence, the projection of V onto W is equal to 1 over square root of 6 times negative 2 over square root of 6, 1 over 2 square root of 6, 1 over square root of 6, minus 1 over square root of 2 times 0, negative 1 over 2 square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. This is equal to negative 1 third, 1 third, negative 2 thirds. This is our W1 and W2 is simply V minus W1. That's equal to 4 thirds, 2 thirds, 5 thirds. So therefore, we write V as W1 plus W2.